Hi, this is my book review of The New Pioneers by J.P. Faber, How Entrepreneurs Are Defying the System to Rebuild the Cities of Towns of America. This book is centered around the theme, around the ideology of lean urbanism. Lean urbanism is a relatively new term, I guess, in reference to relaxed or unenforced building code in cities and towns and J.P. Faber the author profiles dif profile different neighborhoods different cities on how lean urbanism increased recovery for example in New Orleans or took unsafe warehoused districts turned them into art districts such as the Wyndham district in Miami and accelerates new development, new interest, and actually fosters what the citizens of that city and town are asking for because it is a natural and organic growth and development of real estate building. So in the book, like I said, Faber profiles various districts, towns, neighborhoods. Um, the three that caught my attention was one, Detroit. Um, Detroit right now apparently is just a desolate wasteland there <laughs> Well, at least that the way people describe it um, Their population was at one and a half million and is dropped all the way it, At its peak in the 80s or 50s and it's dropped to its current level of 700,000. So there are there are it's a seemingly post-apocalyptic city with vacant buildings all all around the outskirts and he Faber emphasized how it's this motivation to rebuild Detroit that has fostered a lean urbanism approach in their entrepreneurs and their builders. So an example he uses is a startup that felt that wanted to start that was starting in Boulder, Colorado and shopped around and settled in Detroit because of the reduced overhead and oh they were a solar broker a solar panel broker and he credits his success to moving the business to Detroit because of the decreased low overhead and the author profiles different methods these new entrepreneurs worked around the system or redefine the code so that they could do what they wanted to do. Another example was a coffee roaster who essentially had a coffee shop in his warehouse. However, there were no cashiers, there were no servers. It was just paying cash, show up, and you know what you're supposed to do. I thought was really interesting. The other city that caught my attention was Seaside. Seaside uh, was developed by this guy who inherited acres of land in the panhandle of Florida along the Gulf and he inherited this land from his grandfather and what he chose to do is to organically grow a beachside town with full amenities and the way he did it is he cut up the acre into different lots and he started on one built raised more money over time and then built again and then built again and built again and he began to recruit people organically pollinate this area so that they recruited a bakery for example they recruited different restaurants and amenities and they offered all these benefits and it was just this gradual organic growth into a now full-fledged town and he once again emphasized that it was this lean urbanism approach where you don't stifle the construction, you encourage it by reduced regulation and foster a mentality of asking what the people want and then bringing that. The last one that extremely caught my attention was Go Homes in San Diego. So this architect professor slash professor is develops a program um, that fosters a full vertical approach for for architects that is contractor developer architect full vertical approach so they try to teach them the full 360 holistic approach rather than 
traditional architect schools that only teach you design. So particularly what caught my interest is he created these go homes. And what they are is he had this lot in a single family home residential zoning. So what he did, and this is genius, what he did is he created this six room complex building with a shared kitchen. So instead of each room having a bathroom kitchen, bathroom kitchen, in order to work around that that multifamily code, he has one shared kitchen, bath, bathroom, bedroom with their individual entrances and a mini fridge, room for a mini fridge in each room as well as you know, room for a burner if optional. And I thought that was absolute genius and the, it's also because I am also involved in real estate and I also build and I am also inclined to multifamily. It makes more sense, um, increased density, increased collaboration within the tenants. And I have lots in a single family zoned um, neighborhood. And at first I was begrudgingly going to build single family homes. However, I now realize the possibility in building a similar complex and I live in a town that has two universities so this would be perfect for student housing or alternatively having it be used for elderly elderly care so get a contract from an assisted living that has overflow and have them rent and inhabit the property with individual entrances with a shared kitchen six rooms shared bathrooms and it's just so much more practical and you hear a lot about these this shared living being much more preferred higher density um, increased collab increases collaboration and community and so that really caught my attention and really got my wheels spinning and really got me thinking on the possibilities that I've previously been limited to but that I have now been um, been presented to and that is the primary reason why I picked up this book so I'm dedicating the next month to reading about urban planning specifically urbanism the more conscious approach and so I started with this one I found it in my public library I was looking for another one but that book didn't pan out I wasn't that interested so I came across this one and it really catalyzed my um, my interest and well, the reason why I'm doing this is because I become a little disenchanted with real estate and building. So I was looking to create, to foster a sense of heart, like Don Juan in Carlos Casta in Carlos Castaneda's books describes it. When picking a path, you need to pick a path that has heart. And so I don't enjoy my certain circumstances, my certain profession, and the type of work I'm doing. So. I turn to these books to help give me ideas that maybe the current angle I'm at in real estate is stifling me and it's time to find heart through more alternative and more progressive forms of urbanism, lean urbanism being one option, and more conscious, conscientious urban planning when building and developing. So I'll keep you updated on that, on those discoveries. Thank you.